What's up Techno Behefa Server Pro and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using Survival Plus. Survival Plus, put simply, is a total conversion plugin for Minecraft that changes the way you play and survive almost entirely. Weapons, armor and harvesting are all overhauled among other systems. Head over to the file section of your Minecraft server in your Server Pro VPS. As the plugin is a total conversion mod for Minecraft, you should install this plugin on a fresh server. Turn off your server if it's running, then download a copy of your world folder as well as any other files and folders you wish to keep as well as we'll be clearing everything. Select and delete all of your files as we're resetting the server entirely. Head over to the dashboard tab and make sure that you have paper or spigot 1.17 or above selected as craft bucket is not supported by the plugin. Then start your server to generate files. Head over to the shell tab to watch progress. Then when it's done, head to the plugins tab and search for survival plus. Install the latest version that's compatible with your server and then restart. Alternatively, you can download the plugin from the Spigot page and upload it to your Server Pro panel. Upon connecting for the first time, you'll be asked to download a resource pack. Make sure to do so as it contains skins for new items and more. In chat, you'll also see a link to the survival guide for Survival Plus. Clicking it takes you to the plugin's Bitbucket wiki where players can learn about the plugin and how it works. To prevent reading the page verbatim, I'll quickly give you a rundown. Wooden and golden tools are removed and new items take their place. To collect wood, use a hatchet or an axe. Dirt or sandy blocks can be collected with a shovel, stone with a mattock or pickaxe, crops with a sickle, string and TNT with shears, and to place artificial blocks, you'll now need a hammer in your offhand. That's already a huge change. Now for actually surviving. First, you'll need to break leaves for sticks or craft them with saplings. Collect flint from gravel, which you can find in lakes, rivers, extreme hills, caves, or cliffs. Or, of course, you can craft it with cobble and sand. Next, you'll need to craft a hatchet and mattock using the recipes on screen. Collect wood, then find a cave and collect some stone. Harvest cows and sheep to obtain leather and string, which you can get from wool. Then, craft a crafting table. Crafting a normal stone shovel will make digging a lot easier. You can find all recipes for Survival Plus in the recipe guide. Crafting a fire striker allows you to craft torches by surrounding it with sticks or shift and right click for a portable smelter. With a durability of 8, you can cook food and items or light blocks. Just remember to remove all items from this window before closing it. Then craft a furnace by smelting 8 clay and surrounding a brand new fire striker with bricks in a crafting table. By now, you'll likely need more than just food. The plugin also adds thirst. Consume water from a water bowl or a water bottle. To do so, throw balls into water source blocks to collect water to drink. But drinking this water isn't good. It needs to be purified by putting dirty water bottles onto a campfire or a furnace or smoker. You can also use a cauldron on top of a fire to purify water. If you want a bit more, you can also craft coffee. But water isn't all. You also now need to worry about food diversity. Cookies can increase your health when you eat more and more, a stackable 30 second health boost. Beetroots can buff your strength with 10 stackable seconds, and poisonous potatoes purge all poison effects like a bucket of milk, and it's stackable as well, though they have a 60% chance of poisoning you. Food diversity is needed, as I mentioned earlier, so consume carbohydrates from grains and sugars, proteins from meat, poultry and milk, and finally vitamins and salts from vegetables and fruits. You'll need to craft a stone or iron sickle to collect crops, but sometimes the stone one won't drop any food, hence you need to upgrade. And best of all, chickens now lay eggs instead of just poofing new ones into existence. And the last of the basics for survival, fatigue. You also need to sleep, otherwise the effects from lack of sleep will get worse and worse. Coffee can energize you if you're not near a bed. You can get further by experimenting or by visiting and going through the wiki page, linked down below. On the mechanics page, you'll find some more info on armor such as movement debuffs when wearing heavy armor, chairs that can actually be sat on, and bow loading such as the need to have arrows in your offhand to load a bow or crossbow. A setting in the plugin also limits crafting, so you need to have unlocked recipes before being able to use them. And that's just the basics. But before we end this video, let's dive into the configuration. Locate the config in the plugin folder. This config is simple but also very well documented. The play data folder contains, you guessed it, 
player data. These files contain stats for players, as well as whether hunger, thirst, energy, and nutrients are scored. Lang underscore en dot YML contains the plugin's text for localization, which you can edit to change how the plugin talks to players. Items.yml lets you edit nutrition values for every consumable, as well as the durability and repair costs for items. Data.yml contains files you should not touch. Finally, config.yml. This is where all of the settings are. Change the plugin's language at the top, as well as enabling or customizing the resource pack. You can enable chat to only work with players within a specific distance, or disable player coordinates on the debug screen. The welcome guide toggles whether players get a link on login or join. The survival section toggles whether it's enabled at all. This section includes toggles for limited crafting, unlocking recipes on join, removing wooden tools, and whether blocks can be broken or harvested with only specific tools, as well as needing a hammer to build. Then there's drop rate modifier, custom torch recipe, and finally whether merchant villages are modified too. The mechanics section controls whether knight can be skipped, armor debuffs, the custom bow requirements, grappling hook, and medkit toggles, buffs for food, and food diversity requirements for levels, as well as debuffs for each of those levels. Levels go up the more hungry you are. Next to the food diversity options, there are also options for thirst and energy, including levels for those, as well as how much each item replenishes, as well as drain rates. Compass waypoints can be toggled as well. Left-clicking with a compass tells the player's coordinates in chat, and right-clicking marks the point where the player is so they can find their way back as the compass points them to the spot. Players can eat tropical fish to teleport to their last waypoint, which can be toggled with clownfish. The chairs section allows you to toggle it entirely and use only specific types of stairs or chairs. The weather system is also customized and settings can be found for that here too. Item and entity mechanics let you customize the speed of smelting and toggle or customize specific mechanics like pigment chests, beekeeper suits, suspicious meat, chicken breeding, and piglin bartering. Finally, you can toggle custom recipes and legendary item drops too. In here, you'll also find switches you should leave alone due to them being under development, including burnout torches and snow generation revamp. With all of that aside, the wiki is the best place for information. Links to everything in the description down below. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And if you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!